Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will talk about padded RSA. In particular, I will focus on PKCS version 1.5, which is not secure, but it is good to learn why it is. Okay, uh, first let's recall RSA is a function mapping an element m to m power e mod n. e and n are public parameters. All right, this is the function that we have been studying for quite some time. Now, there's a fundamental problem here. Say the same message is encrypted again, right? Uh, what will happen? You will get the same ciphertext. Suppose you, you, your message is say m equal to one, and the ciphertext will be one, of course. And if you encrypt it again, you will get the same ciphertext. Um, so there is no notion of so-called plain text security, uh, CPA security it is called. If you know that the, the sender has encrypted a message m, and you wanted to check whether that's true or not, all you have to do is just take the message m, rise it to power e, mod n, you get a ciphertext, you compare whether that's the same ciphertext the sender sent. If it is, then you know m was sent. So there is no CPA security built inside the RSA function that we are seeing here. Okay, for example, suppose um, sender will send only a message from the set, say, um, zero to five, just making an example, right? We don't know which one the sender sent, but it's easy to check which one it, he sends by he or she sends by just looking at the ciphertext in, in the sense that uh, you, you, as an attacker, you also call the RSA function for each of these elements, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and compare against the one that was captured, um, meaning the one that was sent by the uh, sender. And if it is matching, then you know uh, which message was actually sent. Okay, that is the problem with the raw RSA. So how do we make the RSA system more secure in terms of hiding the information about plain text? Okay, and one attempt was uh, back then developed in 1990s is PKCS version 1.5. Okay, um, let me now explain to you uh, how the construction works at a very, very high level instead of calling RSA of M directly, the goal is to take some random number R and put it as part of the message, okay? So uh, double line means concatenation, right? And, and so you have a new message M cap, which is made of random number R followed by the actual message. And then you apply the RSA of M cap. Now, even if the same message is encrypted again, you get a different ciphertext because uh, a new R is chosen for every encryption process, okay? Uh, of course, the length of the R has to be agreed so that the receiver can decrypt and throw the R away and, and extract the unpadded message M. That is the, the high level idea, okay? This is, this is not exactly correct, but this gives you an intuition. All right, and now let's move on to the, the more uh, formal specification of uh, version 1.5. How, how is the padding done there? The padding is as follows. Uh, the first byte is zero, followed by uh, and the next byte, uh, zero x is hex, right? Two, and then followed by a random number r, right? And then your uh, a special number zero, again, zero x zero, and then m. One more condition is that your r must not have any zero inside. r is a random number, no byte of r should be having a zero. Uh, otherwise, the, the decryptor will be confused, okay? So the, this is basically the construction. If your message M has to be applied to RSA, what they do in the standard is they take your message M, but uh, in front of EM, they stick it in this, this data. Um, you may wonder where do they get this, this uh, zero, two, and so on. I will explain later, uh, but at this moment, some important things to note. By putting a zero, zero in the front, you know for sure M cap, will be an element in Z star N, right? Because you have a zero in the beginning. So M cap belongs to uh, with a high probability. I mean, it will be relatively prime with a very, very high probability in Z star N. So that's not a problem. Uh, this zero X zero two uh, is, is a constant of course. And R is a random number chosen in such a way that the whole thing in terms of the number of bits of uh, M cap is same as the number of bits of the public modulus N. Okay, that's basically the way it's done. Same as the number of uh, bits of the public modulus N. Okay, so how many R's we can choose? It depends on the length of M. Okay, 
but there is one more caveat I need to explain. M cannot be too large now. Yes, you can see here because we need room for uh, these three bytes. This is byte one, uh, byte two. I'm going to you say this is the third byte. Okay, three bytes, and then you need the uh, enough number of bytes for R, right? So you you can't have an M that is taking all the room uh, available. You need to leave some room for R. Okay, the question now is what is the size of R? It turned out that in this standard, the, the size of R in terms of bits is at least 64 bit, okay, eight bytes. So totally, I, I call this as eight here, okay. Totally there are eight plus three, 11 bytes, right? This is one, this is two, this is three, and you have eight. So totally 11 bytes are for your um, randomness built inside before you call RSA. So RSA is now no longer called on M, it's called on M cap, of course. So RSA of M cap is called, okay. And the decryptor will a ciphertext C, it will decrypt it using the regular RSA decryption. It will get back M cap, of course, and then it will just parse this text and say, okay, where is my zero zero? At the end, it throws away everything, everything that is from the beginning all the way into the uh, last to zero zero uh, is thrown away and then the M is recovered. Okay, this is how the decryption works. So let me now explain some interesting properties now. Let's say the message that you are trying to encrypt is M equal to one, simple, small message. It will not be uh, one anymore. The ciphertext will not be one. It will be as zero, zero two, some random number. In, the, in this case, it will be very large random number because your M is just only one, a bit that means only one byte. Remember, as I said, the number of bits in the um, transformed plain text must be same as the number of bits in the plain text. Therefore, enough number of R will be added, and you will not be able to see it from the ciphertext uh, whether I send the M equal to one or M equal to zero. You can't tell that. That's basically a CPU security concept. Um, that's the intention, but it's not quite true. There are some interesting weaknesses in this model. There is one that is famous in terms of the ciphertext tampering. Uh, that's the work of uh, Bleichenbacher, but I am not going to talk about Bleichenbacher yet. I will uh, talk about some other attacks that are more fundamental. But for now, let's focus on the padding format. It's 0, 0, 0, 2, some random number, stick it in, and then 0, 0, and then yeah. So, okay. So let me now show to you a demo for a simple case, right? Just take a small number, m equal to one, show the ciphertext. It's, it's not going to be one power e is one. It, it won't be one. It will be some other number because of the randomness. Okay, so I'm going to take only a 256-bit RSA, which is, which is terribly uh, small and should not be used. You should be using at least 2048, but for quick demo, this is good. So my unpadded message is one, but look at the encoded message. En encoded means before encryption, we just transformed it into padding. And this is the padded message should have been the right text. But anyway, you see here, the first byte is zero. The next byte is two, as I explained on my whiteboard, followed by a zero again, right? And then the message. Okay, so we can see whether that is true in my encoded message. My message itself is simple, right? M equal to one. And um, before that, it is my zero, zero. This is the zero, zero matching. And the beginning is zero, 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 two. Yeah, here you go. So this is the encoded message. So we, we actually encrypt the encoded message to get the ciphertext. As you can see, the ciphertext doesn't tell you now, at least from the outside, doesn't tell you whether uh, my M is one or not. If I had used the regular RSA, you, you can immediately tell I, I have used one because you can, all you have to do is just say, take the ciphertext and look at it, whether it's one. If it is one, you know my message must be one, okay? Uh, it's because I can just take M power E mod N, right? M is one and uh, one power E is one. Therefore I can tell that my message is one. But now you can't tell uh, unless I tell you that I have my M equal to one. Um, that's the intention, but there are some fundamental weaknesses in this padding and that we will talk later. All right, let me show you the source code. Okay, RSA PKCS. So here is the regular key generation part, right? You generate the keys, public key, private key and so on. Um, and then here is the message M to be one for demo purpose. I encode it, how is the encoding working? Encoding takes the message and the RSA modulus, right? Um, it puts a constraint that the data should have 
11 bytes less than the size of the modulus as I explained on the whiteboard. Where does the 11 come from? Because you remember uh, the three bytes for the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, and then a 0. Uh, and then you need at least eight bytes for the random number. That's the reason why the data cannot have a length more than k length minus 11. Um, it has to be less than that. So that means you can find out how many random bytes do I, do I have to generate. And then I go ahead and generate that many random bytes. Okay. And then I convert that my message into a sequence of bytes. And as you can see, prefix is 0, 0, 0, 002. And then I have this setup that I have shown. Okay. Plus means um, array concatenation in, uh, in Python. So you have the encoded message. And then you can, uh, uh, of course, call RSC on the encoded message. That's what happening here. So first take the message, encode it, and then call your regular RSA. And the decryption will do the same. First we'll decrypt the in incoming ciphertext and then it'll, it will uh, call the decode, okay, to decode it. So how is decoding working? Decoding also does the same. Um, it, will, it will check whether the first byte is zero, second byte is zero two. Uh, it's, uh, and then it will go ahead and uh, um, uh, read everything, um, throw away all of the, random bytes until the zero is hit, and then the remaining bytes are the message bytes. That's basically uh, it. There may be some bugs. I didn't do a testing, but that's fine. Um, this is the basic idea of encoding and decoding in this um, uh, PKCS uh, 1.5 version. Okay, so the main point for now is to show to you that um, if you use this, you get different ciphertext. Let me now run the same thing again. Here is the m equal to one, right? Let me do the m equal to one once more, right? So that you can see the ciphertext will be different this time. Okay, let's, okay. Encrypting it again, so that's what I'm going to show. Encrypting it again, same message, of course. Let me try it on a very small RSA modulus. Okay, so a couple of things. My message is one, the ciphertext is this, but the same message, for the same key, of course, you have a different ciphertext. Okay, that's basically uh, the reason why we need to introduce randomness into our uh, encryption process. Uh, that's that's the goal of this padding scheme that I talked about just now. Okay, however, unfortunately, this padding scheme is uh, not secure. Um, so in the next segment, I will show to you an attack that will uh, break the CPA security. Okay, a chosen plain text attack. Okay, all right, that's all.